patients come and you say, I want to give sorafenib, and maybe very soon regorafenib, and they look at you and say, uh, hey, Dr. Finn, but I heard that you can now analyze my tumor and you can tell me exactly what I need as therapy. So what's that story about precision medicine and individualized therapy, especially in HCC? Well, HCC is a very heterogeneous disease, and, and, and it's not one disease, and we can speak of that in the context as we have in the clinical manifestations, that it's liver disease and malignancy, and therefore we need to individualize our approach based on their underlying liver function, their performance status, and their tumor characteristics. At the same time, you're alluding to the molecular component. Uh, we know that in other cancers, perhaps the biggest impact have come from identifying individual molecular alterations and then targeting those alterations. In liver cancer, uh, as we've spent the last several minutes discussing, uh, the most successful agents have actually been multi-targeted approaches because we lack a molecular driver. Uh, we are learning more, and the new generation of agents that are in development are trying to take a more biomarker-driven approach. Uh, there are uh, platforms out there that give us molecular data. Uh, and then the challenge for us is what do we do with that molecular data in HCC? It's not like other diseases where we find a certain molecular alteration and there's drugs readily available. However, I think in the future that's where we want to see HCC go, that we sub-segment the disease based on a patient's individual tumor characteristics. But as it stands now today for our patients, uh, the sequence is based on you know, the, the randomized phase three data which we have, which is based on their clinical presentation and their course of treatments you know, at the time we see them. And, you know, this brings an important point uh, that, uh, if you recall, HCC is really a disease that's kind of caused by different uh, um, risk factors that are rather very well defined, among which, of course, hepatitis C and hepatitis B, uh, diabetes and morbid obesity uh, that leads to uh, fatty liver disease and NASH, and, of course, alcohol. And... Uh, I would like to uh, go back to Laura one more time, and uh, uh, especially with the advent of the uh, treatments for uh, hepatitis C, uh, there has been reports about the concern of recurrence of the cancer early. We just saw a recent report about that. And in addition to that, what do we know about the interaction between, uh, if at all we know anything, in regard between the protease inhibitors and sorafenib? So the, you're right, there has been a concern and it's, it's, it's causing a lot of um, challenges to when to treat patients when they have hepatitis C uh, and HCC. Uh, there have been first from Barcelona showing that in patients who underwent resection or a curative ablation that they uh, had recurrence of their tumor almost at 30%. Um, shortly thereafter, there was another uh, study that had almost the exact close to 30% recurrence rate, so much higher than what we would expect. We normally see a 20% per year. This was at about six months, so higher than what we would expect. So concerning, like why is that happening? Uh, some have thought that with the interferon days, it would take 12 weeks to see the virus become negative. We're seeing virus become negative within a week on these new medications. So is there some kind of immunosuppressive state that occurs when the virus is all of a sudden negative so quickly, which then could lead to fast uh, reproduction of tumor cells that are still present? Um, as far as your other question, it was regarding... The sorafenib plus, plus uh, protease inhibitors? Um, I have used both uh, at the yeah. same time without yeah. having difficulties. I generally yeah. will talk yeah. with a specialty pharmacists yeah. because there are so many different drugs that Correct. are now available Correct. for Correct. Yeah. Uh, hepatitis C and they're not all exactly the same even though they're similar classes. Um, but I have had patients on hepatitis yeah. C treatment with sorafenib without yeah. increased yeah. toxicity. Yeah. Nonetheless, you know, it's very important to note that this data does not exist. And in other words, uh, uh, especially alluding to the first point in regard to the concern about the recurrence, I think a clinical trial that will probably look into the combination uh, of sorafenib plus protease inhibitors is still highly warranted and definitely as an academic community will be very eager to see that one day. Uh, Riyadh, back to you uh, uh, on another level. Uh, have you looked at all, or is there any data in regard to the local therapies and biomarkers that can tell us one way or the other what, what could be evolving there? 
Yeah, to my knowledge, there is very little, very, yeah. very, very little of this work. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. something like, like you said, like alluding to. It's something that we need to be working on, but it's, uh, it's not something that is very well developed right now. And I would say probably in systemic is not uh, necessarily highly defined either, Katie. Right. Well, with you know, I think one of the challenges is that we often have very little tumor tissue to study in liver cancer because um, often biopsy material is very scarce, or patients may be diagnosed radiographically without a biopsy, and so. Um, you know, I think we've had less opportunity to study what markers in a tumor make a difference. Um, in the SHARP trial that led to approval of serafinib um, back in uh, 2007, um, they looked at plasma biomarkers trying to find um, potential, anti or potential markers of angiogenic activity that would be a predictive marker for response to serafinib. And nothing panned out as a significant predictor for benefit from serafinib, though some plasma um, analytes such as HGF or hepatocyte growth factor and kit soluble levels did seem to correlate with poorer prognosis. Nothing was strongly significant and nothing yet that has reached the clinic. So right now we don't have any tumor biomarkers for hepatocytic carcinoma that we use clinically, unlike most of our other solid tumors these days. And absolutely, this is something that we definitely aspire for. And in regard to the biopsy uh, question, uh, I would say other than, of course, the research interest and definitely having the tissue so we can analyze it, there's an important component here that, especially in the advanced setting, that a biopsy is highly warranted uh, uh, simply because some of the HCC might really be a misdiagnosed uh, radiological, radiologically as a combination of, for example, HCC plus cholangiocarcinoma or even cholangiocarcinoma itself to that extent. So I would say that, you know, the uh, uh, high uh, level uh, data that has been shown in the screening setting and the early stage disease uh, uh, about radiologic evaluation does not necessarily translate into the advanced disease where probably a, 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 a biopsy is still highly warranted and uh, probably recommended as well as we just heard.